Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to the English classes. This is the third lesson of your Green Tree English course book, the Cherry Tree, Module 1. In this module, you're going to know more about the author of this lesson and you will comprehend the text and you will understand what relative clauses are. Now, this is the author of our lesson. Have you ever seen his picture? Have you ever heard about Ruskin Bond? This is the author of our lesson, Ruskin Bond. He is a very famous writer. Now let's begin with a warm-up exercise uh, in your textbook. Please open page number 27 of your course book. See, this unit uh, covers lessons under the theme nature. So all, almost all the lessons which comes under this unit is uh, about nature. So that's an interesting topic. We all love nature. We all love plants and trees. So uh, it comes under uh, the topic nature. When we say nature, what all things come, come into your mind? Just, just refresh your ideas. Just write down uh, the names or the words that come into your mind when you say nature. We will have different imaginations about nature. Just jot it down in a, in a book. When you think of nature, the scenes that come into your mind, the words that come into your mind, just jot down in your notebook. No, not in your notebook, just jot it down somewhere. Now let's begin with a crossword. This is also about nature. The first one is main part of the plant to which the leaves and flowers are joined. Guess the answer on right. Third, third across, low bushes. What do you call low bushes? Fifth one, plants growing along the ground or up walls or trees. Now you have uh, the crossword puzzles to write down. So, uh, complete the crossword puzzle yourself and uh, just send me a picture of it. Now let's begin our lesson. Rakesh lives with his grandfather in a little cottage in the Himalayan foothills. His parents live in a small village 50 miles away but there are no schools there. So, Rakesh comes to live in Masuri with his grandfather. One day, when Rakesh was seven, he walked home from the Masuri Bazaar eating cherries. They were a little sweet, a little sour, small, bright red cherries which had come all the way from the Kashmir Valley. By the time he reached home, only three cherries were left. So, Rakesh was eating cherries and he was walking home. Uh, uh, he was just uh, devouring the taste. He was, uh, he was enjoying the taste of the cherry as he walked to home from the bazaar. As soon as he reached home, he saw his grandfather. Have a cherry, Dada. He calls his grandfather Dada. Okay. Have a cherry, Dada, he said. As soon as he saw his grandfather in the garden, 
in the garden. Grandfather took one cherry and Rakesh promptly ate the other two. He kept the last seed in his mouth for a long time. Rolling it around until the tang had gone. Then he placed the seed on the palm of his hand. Are cherry seeds lucky? He asked. Of course, said grandfather. But nothing is lucky if you put it away. If you want luck, you must put it to some use. What can I do with a seed? Plant it. So Rakesh found a small space and began to dig up a flower bed. I'll plant it here. I don't think that's a good idea, said grandfather. I have sown a mustard I have sown mustard in the flower bed. Plant it in that shady corner where it won't be disturbed. Rakesh went to the corner of the garden. He pressed the seed into the soil with his thumb and it went right in. Then he had his lunch, ran off to play with play cricket with his friends. He forgot all about the cherry seed. See, uh, so as soon as he reached home, he had only three cherries left in his hand, Rakesh. So he gave one cherry to his grandfather and the rest too he ate it. So uh, he was asking, he was just devouring the taste. He was, uh, uh, he was putting the uh, cherry seed. The cherry seed was still in his mouth until all the taste of his uh, of that seed had gone away and uh, then he took it out from his mouth and he placed it on his palm and he asked his dad is this cherry seed lucky so his grandfather said everything is lucky but only if you use it some way if you just throw it it won't be lucky so if you do some good uh, thing or if you use it it will be lucky so Rakesh asked, what can I do with this seed? What what use am I what am I going how am I going to use this small seed? So he said, plant it. That's the biggest thing you can do to that seed. That's the biggest help you can do to that seed. So Rakesh, what he did, he, there was this flower flower bed means uh, uh, where we plant flowers. There was a place nearby. He dug it up and he started planting it there. So his grandfather told him. No, that's not a good idea. It is in the middle of somewhere. Um, you just plant it somewhere in a shady area where it will not be disturbed. Otherwise, some kind of hen or cock or something will come and um, just snatch it away. Like uh, they will be scratching in the mud and it will come out if you are putting it in this place. So, just uh, put it in a place, plant it in a place where it will not be disturbed. So he just went into a corner and uh, pressed the uh, seed into that mud. It went inside and then he forgot all about that seed and he went out playing and uh, days passed by. When it was winter in the hills, a cold wind blew down from the mountains and went woo 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 in the Dioda trees. In the evenings, Grandfather and Rakesh sat outside near a charcoal fire and grandfather told stories. Stories about people who turned into animals, beans that jumped and stones that wept. They knew it was spring when the wild ducks flew north again to Siberia. Early in the morning, when he got up to chop wood and light a fire, Rakesh saw the V-shaped formation flying northward. So, uh, this Ruskin Bond, the author, has described the nature so beautifully. Uh, see, he's telling about the uh, sound of the wind uh, when it flies, uh, when the wind is blowing near the Devda trees, and about the uh, animals, about the ducks, about the birds, everything he has described it beautifully. So, um, now it is about. When it is uh, the winter season has come in Rakesh and his grandfather's place and a uh, cold wind blew uh, and it went woo woo in near to the Devdar when it was blowing near the Devdar trees when it was blowing past the Devdar trees sound woo 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 was coming and and it, as it was very cold it, Rakesh and his grandfather would sit near the charcoal to warm themselves and 
during that time grandfather told him very very beautiful stories stories about people who turned into animals different variety of stories and ragesh really enjoyed that and you know uh, they understand when the birds fly that uh, that way and this way they understand that the season has come has changed from the birds and when the wild ducks flew north to siberia they knew that it was spring again and when ragesh got up to chop wood to light the fire he saw the v shaped formation flying northwards v shaped formation means the birds are flying in a v shape they were flying northward so from that they understood that it is the spring season has come now let's have the self check questions try answering these questions why did ragesh live with his grandfather how according to his grandfather will the cherry seed become lucky how did ragesh and his dada spend evenings during winter how did ragesh knew that it was spring season Now that's all for today. Now let's uh, go through the new words that we came across today. Dada, a loving way of calling one's grandfather or brother. Tang, a, sh a strong, sharp taste or smell. So tang, we all uh, drink the tang, right? Tang is actually the meaning of the tang is strong, sharp taste. They are the trees. We say Devadar trees in Malayalam. Also, we say Devadaru. The other trees, trees that grow in the Western Himalayas, they are tall and have like needle-like leaves. It has got a needle-like leaves. They are very tall. Just Google it, then you will understand what is a Devadar tree. Charcoal, a hard black substance that can be used to build a fire. You know what is charcoal, right? We burn charcoal to, uh, when we are making barbecues. Um, and many things we use charcoal char we burn the charcoal v shaped formation when the geese ducks and birds fly from one country to another to escape the winter they fly in the shape of a v this shape makes it easier and faster for them to travel long distance so that's a v shaped you might have ha seen it in movies cartoons and all of the v shaped formation of a birds so the, those are the new words if you find any other new words uh, you can you are free to ask me or you can google it now next we are going to learn what relative clause is a relative clause adds information about something or someone referred to in a main clause see uh, there will be a main clause often there will be a main clause in the sentence not often it is definitely there will be a main clause so uh, a relative clause is something that adds up more information about the main clause it is not necessary even if the relative clause is not there we get the meaning of the sentence but it, go, it gives us some further information about the main clause ok did you get that so a relative clause adds information about someone or something to uh, 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 referring to the main clause the main clause will be there which will give us an idea of what the, the sentence is about but a relative clause will give us more information about that sentence the relative clause the relative clause connects with the main clause by using relative pronouns often the relative clause is connected with these words who whom whose which whomever and that these are the words which is connected always these are the words which connects uh, with the main clause and the relative clause the main clause will be uh, followed by this these words for example the woman who lives next door is coming for dinner tonight see the woman is coming for dinner tonight is the main clause 
but you know it uh, who lives next door it is giving more information about the woman we don't know who the woman is but we know a woman is coming for dinner tonight but uh, who lives the next door it gives more information about the woman understood that is relative clause relative clause gives more information about the main clause about what is said in the main clause another example her husband who or whom i met for the first time last night works for ibm actually the main clause is her husband works for ibm but it is giving uh, more information about the husband whom i met for the first time last night last night it was the last night that i met her husband uh, that is it is a it gives us more information about the husband okay the report on the friend subsidiary which i left on your desk needs to be rewritten uh, the main clause is like uh, the report on the friend subsidiary needs to be rewritten but it gives more which i left on your desk it gives more information about the report it adds up information about the report just like that this part of the factory where we make, make components for conveyor belts is the oldest part of the plant so the main clause is this part of the factory is the oldest part of the plant but uh, it gives these this relative clause where we make components for conveyor belts that gives that adds up information about this part of the factory last week i visited my aunt who is nearly 90 years old last week i visited my aunt as the main clause and who is nearly 90 years old is the relative clause it gives more information about the aunt so that is relative clause relative clause gives more information about the about what is said in the main clause i hope you got an idea about what is relative clause now your tmla is uh, regarding the relative clause complete grammar, grammar section a of page number 33 in your course book that is you have to underline the relative clauses in those sentences thank you for listening my dear children take care bye bye